an adult audio the slip love line may contain sexually oriented content listener discretion is advised love line with adam carolla and dr drew Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Dr. Drew is in Syracuse, New York tonight, yes? I sure am. Mm-hmm. It's good times. Yeah, you know, I used to say yes Uh-oh. and sort of have uh, my tongue on my cheek, but now I realize I'm doing it intentionally. What's that? Saying yes. Yeah, it's listen. It's a nice, brisk thirty-two degrees. Yes, a couple feet of snow on the ground. Yes, yes. It's yes. weather, fog, and yes. goddamn it, it took me like fourteen hours to get here because of the the fog in Chicago. Yes. <sighs> well, Drew, Drew only does gigs that involve three or four flights and a mule. <laughs> Idiot. Idiot. Uh, okay, yeah, there you go. True, seriously, what what time did you leave L.A. this morning? Uh, let's see, tonight's, it's 1 a.m. Eastern time, uh, 10, uh, 5.30. 5.30, you left your yeah. house. Yeah, and, oh, uh, no, no, no. What? I think I left the air, I left the, the uh, terminal at 6 o'clock. I was at the airport at 5.30. Really? But the flight oh, yeah. doesn't leave till 7, does it? No, it was 6. It was like 6 o'clock, 6.15. 6 and, but, 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 don't, uh, well, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't worry. Don't, I sat on the tarmac for three hours. Don't worry. Of course. Don't of worry. Course. Of course. All to go pick up a nickel in Syracuse. What a strategy. Yeah. No, nothing direct to Syracuse either, right? Yeah, just Got to fly to Chicago. Just yeah. one fogged-in flight to Chicago. That's right. Fantastic. All right, buddy. Enjoy. Yeah. All right, all right. Here, when are you coming home? Tomorrow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're such an idiot. What are you thinking? About? All right. Anyway. I'm seeing the world. Seeing the country. Seeing the world. That's right. You're Listen, seeing, you know what, Adam? I, an airport. I, I was at Syracuse University, and I was in the room that you and I spoke in uh, many years ago. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And, that was uh, the old Adam. Yeah. The Adam used to go around and travel with me. He gave, yeah, a, gave right. a crap about people and kids that's and wanted right. to talk to them. That's right. What happened? That was the old Adam and do anything for a nickel. Now I got a couple of bucks. Screw those kids in Syracuse. Okay, here's here's the point. First off, Puddle of Mud is coming on the show tonight, or are coming on the show tonight. Uh, Wesley is uh, going to be here, lead singer from Puddle of Mud. I don't know where he is, so uh, he'll be here. And classic uh, rock, rock. Uh, well, now Chris has picked up the phone. He's distracting me. What's going on over there, Chris? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, I figured that's something to do with uh, with us. Wow, this is a first, Drew. Someone's late for the show. No, oh, never. We got to push it back to ten thirty. Uh, here's the point. He's coming in here from Puddle of Mud. That's good. They've sold, uh, you know, their last album sold uh, 5 million copies. Wow. Yeah, you know, Puddle of Mud, like we were doing this with Linkin Park a few days ago. Like, you think of Linkin Park as, uh, yeah, those guys, nice guys. What do they do? They sold 8 million records. You know what I mean? I, I know. It's incredible. Puddle of Mud, you, you think like, uh, yeah, those guys, what are they doing? Playing? They're, what are they doing? Like, uh proms and stuff like that they're making a living aren't they i mean they you know they travel in the fan but they're out of their parents house aren't they uh, five million records true we got to get yeah. hip to the scene you understand yeah because i i know you i asked him the other i asked him what he thought the biggest seller of uh 2002 was he said uh burt Bacharach. is that true drew no no i thought it said barbara streisand uh, i think it may have been uh brazil 66 okay <laughs> All right, we got to move forward here. All right. Guess who was over at the Ozman's house today, Drew? Who? Me. Wow, nice. While you're chasing a nickel in Syracuse, I'm chilling with the Ozman over what at the happened? Osborne estate. Uh, MTV was doing some kind of uh, something or other over there, some kind of Christmas uh, extravaganza, and they wanted me to come over and do a little something, something. So I came oh over God. and did a little something, something. That, you know, the thing about, I, I've seen the Osbournes a uh, thousand times on TV. It's it's a great show. I enjoy it. I love everybody. But the house is really impressive in real life. Oh, I bet. I bet. I mean, it's a, it's a substantial house. Yeah. You, you want to know, let me tell you, Drew. Let me tell you how you know it's a serious, serious house. When the hardware is custom made, I'm talking about the hinges, the oh, handles. Really? You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, really? You, you think... Drew, in your uh, penny ante life, you wouldn't think anything could get better than just the best hardware. Right. Like if you're if you're willing to step up to the Baldwin, that the 
the Baldwin Polish Brass, that's the best uh, money can buy. That's the best life has to offer. But you Look, don't realize that when people who have super mega bucks build a house, they forge their own hardware. That's incredible. I yeah, didn't know all, it was such a thing. All the really Oz, know. All Ozzy's locks have, like, the cross on it. And the, oh, yeah. The front, the hinges for the front doors are two wrists clenched in a fist holding the hinge pins, you know, the size of real hands, made of solid brass sticking out. Like, it's like, you know, you, normally you just want to sort of ignore, you know, you hope you don't see the hinges. When you go to a really nice house, there's thousands and thousands of dollars just of the hardware, just of the, uh, the uh, decoration stuff out there. Oh, yeah, Ooh. very nice. Nice I did, I did, Yeah, I just didn't know. I You don't even think about those options. D didn't really know they existed. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you're doing the big stuff, you got, like, your initials and stuff forged into all the doorknobs. That's wow. what big bucks is. All right, Drew. Brand yeah. Rock? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, he had uh, had snow put down there, and it uh, was nice. Yeah, got a little snow around. I think they well, wanted What, what exactly there. were you doing there? I just did a little bit. You know what? I was telling people how to make uh, cranberry sauce. <laughs> You right. know, when you, you know, you know how I like cranberries. Yeah, you drive us crazy with it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Fresh cranberries. Yes, yes. That's what I was doing over there. Uh, that's good. All right, and let me just say one thing real fast about uh, the Oz House and anybody involved with any kind of uh, city planning or anything. I, I know uh, this is something I've brought up before, but uh, naturally, I got the horrible directions. You know. Yeah. Dir direction said, uh, you know, take Sunset uh, down to Doheny and then take uh, Doheny down to this way, right? Yeah. Well, there's Doheny and then there's Doheny Road and then there's Doheny Place and then there's Doheny Canyon. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And and which three, which do Doheny do you turn on? I'll tell you which one. The first goddamn Doheny you see. When you're driving along a main road and you're, like, looking for a street and you see that street, you turn on it. And then the one that says Canyon is the next block. But it's too late. You've turned on the first one. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Drew, do you yes, understand yes, what I'm saying? Yes, I see what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Well, what kind of retarded logic is it to name three goddamn streets the same name and put them in the same effing place? I know. Look, and, and then, there, then there's north and south, as though they're yes. entirely different streets. Yeah. Yes. Wesley's here from Puddle of Mud. What's he, up, everybody? He's angry, too, about this thing. Sorry I'm late. Yeah, I'm uh, really, actually, right. I am upset. We, we don't care. We're fine. We're glad that you're here now. That's what Thank I'm saying. You, but, I'm, but I'm saying, why name, why name a street? Why name a street the same name three times and then give it the place, the road, and the way? You know what I'm saying? It, Ego. It's very confusing. I anyway, I turned down Doheny and drove all the way down to Wilshire before I realized I was heading in the wrong direction and uh, made it back up to the uh, Osborne place in one piece. Still had to wait around for an hour. Did you have right. time, man? Oh, yeah. You ever been to the Osborne place? Never. It's cool. Cool. It's like the TV show, but, uh, <laughs> but it smells weird. And uh, right and uh, Ozzy ain't moving around like Peter Pan anymore. <laughs> he's sl he's slowed down a little bit. The Oz man has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, Drew. You probably. Uh, by the way, every third person I ran into in the uh, Osborne house pulled me aside and said, uh, "Tell Drew I'm doing good. Thanks." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, evidently, a lot of drugs going around in that place. They're doing and great. Drew, they're doing great. Yeah. All right. All right. The uh, let's talk about puddle of mud uh, for just uh, one good second. Is that here. Drew? Yeah, that's yeah. Drew. Hey man, what's up? How are you? Nice uh, talking to you, brother. Yeah, haven't seen you guys in a long time. Well, you're not going to see him tonight either because you're I in know. Syracuse I trying know. to make I a should, buck I instead know. of doing your job out here. Oh, you're the man. You are the man. You like Drew, really? Yeah, yeah. he's all right. You guys can come, <laughs> but you know I'm here. That's important. He's thing. a doctor, man. He's got good knowledge. Yeah, people think that, but what do you see? He's not that. He's not that impressive in real life. <laughs> it's like it's like a chick you always thought was hot, and then you see her in real life. She's kind of short, and she's got thick ankles. That's Drew with the knowledge. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? You think he's smart, and then you see him, and it's kind of. Eh. We should all go swimming with bow-legged women, women too. So. Hey, uh, hey, Drew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Just checking yeah. with you. All right. Yeah. Now, don't fade, fade off on me because I know it's like a one thirty where you are right now, right? It's one thirty, and I'm just I'm just like a punching yeah, bag relax. here, taking taking abuse from you, right? What do you mean to do? Jump in and uh, take a chill, yeah. take a chill pill, brother. 
Uh, I'm going to talk about Puddle of Mud. Just quiet down. Uh, Adam, you, you, down. you sound high to me. No, I'm you, not. You, you're drunk. No, I'm not. All How right. dare you? How right. dare you? I had a glass of champagne over oh, the honest oh, oh, oh. One glass. Oh, oh, oh. One glass. That was many right. hours ago. Right. He's got like a bottle of Dom right here, man. Wesley's had a few nips, so I can smell that on him. Nothing wrong with that. It's part of the rock style. It's part of the lifestyle. All right, so the new CD comes out uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, right? Uh, yes, the man. The 25th. We're yeah. going to uh, hear something off the uh, new CD. It's called uh, Life on Display. I was, uh, I don't know if you heard me talking about it, but I can't believe that 5 million copies of Come Clean were sold in 2001. It's just, uh, I, it's just, uh, it's amazing. It is, man. It's you, amazing. Yeah? You're still surprised? Uh, it's, it's, it's a crazy experience, you know, but, uh, you got to move on and, uh, and, you know, write more songs, so. Yeah, do you feel, do you feel pressure because the first, uh, CD was so successful? Um, it's it's a factor, but you know I'm, I'm trying not to look at it like that. I'm just uh, you know, writing you know writing music. Good, so. you're keeping it real. That's what we call it, Drew. Hey, uh, <laughs> by the way, the uh, band. Are you guys from San Diego? No, because the band played a, a free show to uh, raise money for the uh, fire victims in San Diego. Yes, well, that's nice. Yeah, it's nice. I thought you only do that for your hometown kind of right, thing. Right, 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 right. Well, there wasn't really a fire there. Your hometown? Well, there was a, you know. Where uh, is your hometown? Uh, Kansas City. You got to start a <clears throat> fire over there. <laughs> it's a little hard. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of clouds and rain and well, snow. Well, do so. something. Maybe yeah. a race riot or something. Whatever it is, <laughs> then, then puddle of mud comes in and heals the city. That's what okay, I'm talking okay. about. All right, we're gonna take some calls. Drew, you ready to take some calls? Yeah, I'd love to do that, Adam. Let me tell you what a science this show is. Uh, you know, last night you put your post-it sticker next to the call you wanted last at the uh, end of last night's show? It's still there. It's still there. So guess, yeah. guess which call we're starting with. We're going for the one I picked out last night. Right. You remember what line that was? Uh, six. No. Five. No. Then I don't remember. Keep going. Two. Yeah. Yeah. You got a gift, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Rebecca, all right, calm down now. <laughs> Rebecca? Hello? You're 20. What's up? Yeah, um, hey, Dr. Drew, hey, Adam. Just wanted to say how big of a fan I am. I've been listening to you guys since I was, like, 14. Great. Wow. Um, I think you guys are so wonderful. Um, okay, so I have two questions. Mm -hmm. First question is regarding my fiancé, and he's kind of into necrophilia. Who? Um, well... <laughs> Well, no. He just, he, he just dabbles in it. Just wets his beak <laughs> in it. It's not, not, not a full time thing. Um, he, he likes for me to lay down and pretend that I'm dead and not move. And at first, it was a joke because, you know, we just thought it was cute. And now he's asking me to do it on a regular basis, and it's really freaking me out. And I don't know how to deal with it in an appropriate manner because I don't want to make him self conscious. I wonder if he wants. He, he's calling it lay down and pretend you're dead. When the reality is, he just wants you to lie down and be still. You know what I'm uh, saying, Adam? You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the guys yeah. may have screwed up ways of getting their sort of needs met. And like, let's play a game. Let's pretend you're dead. Mm. And the reality, guy's just like, I need you to no, hold still. No, no, no. But I really, I really try and fulfill his sexual prowess. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, well, how do you do that when you can't move? Well, I know. I mean, in other ways, like in an oral fashion or. Uh huh. Else. Well, I, I know, but like during the uh, during the necrophilia uh, portion of the sexual ride, uh, you have to lie motionless, right? Right. And so you can't really do much for him, right? Uh huh. You see, that may be the only way he can get her to do that. No, I, I don't know, but does he? S All he right. Says, well, yeah. Wait a minute. Does he say necrophilia? Yeah, he says we're going to play necrophiliac. Mm. And, and, and does He's he talk about? Yeah. But is he talking about those things? Does he into death and death images? And no. Does he it's not, talk? It's not gothy. No, not at all. No. He doesn't talk about dying people or no, interested no, there. No, 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 no. He's totally normal. And the what next, does he ask? The, I mean, oh, go ahead. He, I was just gonna to say the next game that he's probably gonna make you play is like maybe jumping on a trampoline like naked or something. Uh -oh. um. <laughs> hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's genius. Wants me to lie there and 
be still. I don't know. See, I think, I, Adam, I really think he's just, this is the way he gets her to lie still. I, I know. She's who, so busy. She's so busy satisfying him. She he can't get her to relax, just be still, and let him do his thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I, Drew, you have a lot of harebrained schemes. I'm on board with most of them. But I don't think you, you risk creeping her out and freaking her out by saying this. Although, let's find out what he does when you pretend you're dead. He, he just, you know, he makes me lie still and, and yeah, uh-huh. goes at it until he, you know, goes to orgasm and, you know, so, and then it's over. So he has sex with you? Yeah. Okay, and and do you ever fake a dead orgasm? No, I I don't orgasm during. Sex. <laughs> That'd be nice though. So. Just her, her her dying breath was a fake orgasm. But that's at least okay. how you can rationalize what women do with you, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> you know I think I've had sex with some corpses before. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Not sure. All right, this is uh, I don't know about this guy. What's he do for a living? Um, he's a student. He's a senior in college. Mm. Hmm. What's he doing next year? Are, are his parents alive? Did he yeah, did he no. see any death? Anything yeah. weird? Was he a nam? Anything? No, no, no. Both of his parents are. I mean, yeah, his parents Adam. Are every every single time she mentions necrophilia, she goes, "He just wants me to lie still." That that's yeah. not. It, it's not. He's, he doesn't want her sort of, dra- you know, draped in a cl- you know in a shroud. He he just wants her to lie still, and he calls right. that. Let's play necrophilia. Yeah. True, I think you're you're chasing your retarded tail. I have another question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was 16. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, my doctor last year suggested that I go on glucophage, which is a medication right. that makes you right. super fertile. And I got no, 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 no. Glucophage is for diabetes. Right, but it's it's used to treat women with polycystic ovarian syndrome because it because um, we can't deal with insulin properly. Right, it's ma- it has nothing to do with the ovarian function or with fertility. It just helps you with your insulin resistance. Okay. Um, it, it just decreases. It theoretically, it may even decrease your risk of developing diabetes, but it certainly helps you your sugar metabolism just generally. Okay. Um, my doctor had told me that we don't put women on this unless we're trying to actively get them to have a baby and I got engaged to him in December and I'm getting a lot of flack from my family because they all want me to go on on it so I don't damage my system any further than it already has been by this disease so I'm wondering if I should go on it and risk oh having, boy. having a baby what I- Drew wait a minute you got this all screwed up first of all your system has not been damaged by polycystic ovarian disease okay okay yeah, are you overweight no Okay. You may not even have the insulin resistance if you're not overweight associated with polycystic ovarian disease. But as a sort of a um, safety, people often, many, particularly gynecologists, were advised patients to go on glucophage to help with the insulin oh, wait metabolism. A Hold on a second, True. Wait, yeah. let me just say one thing. Yeah. Everybody, you can't ask a crazy necrophilia question that's going to last four minutes and then follow it up with a polycystic ovarian question yeah. you got one goddamn question yeah no, just that, to say you, you she's got it all screwed your, up i don't Isn't care it? she done this, we're on we're on minute six of her right, thing but the, re, the reason they all right, just just let's just say the reason her. the reason to treat the diabetes is they get gestational diabetes they get diabetes during the pregnancy if they get pregnant the glucophage really to my knowledge does not affect fertility per se so don't worry about that all right rebecca's a little naughty yeah. Oh. 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 oh yeah. A little angry too. Something's Not up. Something's up. Something's up. Going on. Something going on with her. Just energy. Whew. Maybe her boyfriend's just tired of hearing her yap all. That's the what time. I'm saying. He's That's what I'm talking down. about. I'm green with Drew. Just baby. Yeah. And, but, but see, I try that pretend you're dead stuff when we're watching TV with my wife. It's uh, necrophiliac time. Except <laughs> there'll be no sex. We're just daddy's gonna watch TV in peace now. You pretend like you're a rotting corpse. <laughs> And uh, give me the TiVo remote. Yeah. Wesley, ever do that? <laughs> do that with the old lady? Uh, negative goes right now. No? Don't do that. All right. True, you ought to try that with your wife. Yeah? Uh-uh. 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 No. Remember, my Michael? wife's the... Uh, yeah, your wife what? It's, it's the beer waiting for me at home after I've toured the beer, beer factory. I liked that last night. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Is that what I said about your wife? No. You said, you said I couldn't go to a strip bar because it'd be like you going to a beer factory. And I said, and, yeah, and, and I've got the, my favorite beer waiting for me at home. Yeah, yeah. I was like me going, you can't go to a strip club because it'd be like me going to a beer factory and not getting to sample the beer. Right. And, you're, and I said, and your favorite beer is, in my case, my favorite beer is waiting for me at home. Right. 
You like that bad domestic stuff in a can, you see. I like the European <laughs> stuff. That's me. Michael? Yeah? You're 14? Yep. What's up there, pre-pube? <laughs> Never mind. Um, <laughs> Never yeah, mind? I'm having uh, pr- troubles um, ejaculating, mm-hmm. pretty much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How old are you? 14. Have you ever ejaculated? Once. Once? Okay. In well, your sleep, it- right? No. <laughs> No? You were awake? Yeah. And what'd you what do? Is, how'd you get it to do that? <laughs> the good old fashioned hand. Really? Yeah. Wow. All right. But but not not again. Yeah, I've been trying and Sure. Like almost nothing would come out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, almost nothing? Like, yeah, almost nothing. <laughs> like drip. <laughs> not barely a drip. Yeah, well, get used to it. That's about it. You've been watching those movies on the Internet. No, I haven't. You haven't? No. Why aren't you watching those movies on the Internet? Because I'm not a bad boy. Wow. (laughs) You don't sound like a bad boy, but you sure sound like a weird boy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, all right, buddy. Well, look, Drew, what what happens? It's getting weird for me, but what what happens when a... uh, when a young 14-year-old, he gets one, he squeezes one off, but there's no repeat performance. Yeah, it's sort of like women when they start their period. They have their period, then it's really irregular, and it doesn't come for a while, and then, then it kicks in. Right. It, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a just necessarily, you know, it's not the accelerator being pushed to the floor immediately. It takes right. a while. So you going. might be able to get one off. I don't know what, uh, I'm trying to figure out my, uh, my whacking uh, chronology here, but... I, I think I squeezed one off somewhere at 16, late bloomer. Wow. And then, uh, then thought, well, all right, this is the kind of thing I could do two, maybe three times a year. Little did I know. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Little did I know it would become a career. <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, well, this, that's good. I, let's see. What, what are we, in April? I'll be I'm planning, planning for a November jack. But uh, I didn't know I didn't know it would work out the way it did. I didn't know <laughs> I, my uh, penis and my hand would fall in love. <laughs> that's the, that's the thing. Just, I get, know, just give it time, man. Just give it time. Yeah, he's got That'd a he, Jack Fest. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a Michael's just got a don't don't pressure yourself. Yeah, a, a uh, an angry hand and a uh, confused penis are a bad combination. Yes, Drew? Yes, bad. Bad. bad combination. Thank bad. You. Okay. Bad. Good. You just repeat the last two words I say. Uh, yes. That's what I am to do. Yes. Yes. See, sometimes yeah. you can just do the last word. Yes. Yes. Okay? Okay. Good. Good. Okay, stop. I'll stop. Okay. okay. All right. We, All right. Okay, quiet. We, oh. All right, Wes is here from Puddle of Mud. Uh, we're going to hear something off the uh, new CD, which is coming out uh, tomorrow, and then I'm going to tell you guys uh, how you can uh, win a CD. Tomorrow. It's coming out tomorrow, isn't it? November 25th. Oh, November 25th. What? what the hell are we? Oh, what's it? You've been, hang out, you've been hanging out at Aussies too long, man. Oh, <laughs> my God. Hey, let me ask you this, Drew. In yeah. the kitchen... A giant novelty size mortar and pestle. Ooh. Isn't that bad for a drug addict family to have that huge mm. pharmacist drug crushing thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe they use it for, for food. Don't worry, I got it out of there. Oh good. I got it out of there. That's yeah, good. November twenty fifth, which is uh what are we on? What are we in? It's the- November twenty fifth on a Tuesday. It's or- called Life on Display. That's a week from tomorrow. Yeah. That would be correct, yeah. That would be correct. yeah, I'm going to write that out. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, that's one week from tomorrow, kiddies. Drew's out in uh, Syracuse, and uh, we'll hear some off the new CD after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Hey, Adam. Dr. Dr. Uh, Drew's in Syracuse. Quiet down, Drew. Yeah, Drew's right, in that. Syracuse uh, tonight, by the way. 1-800-LOVE-191. Wesley's here from Puddle of Mud. We're going to hear what's something up, what's up? off the new CD, which is uh, coming out one week from tomorrow on the 25th. Life on Display is the name of the CD. Yes, Drew. And uh, we had the caller from, with polycystic ovarian disease a few minutes ago, and I looked up what she was talking about, the glucophage and its effect on fertility. And the glucophage is, is to affect the, hype, the insulin resistance associated with this disorder. Sure. And in about 30% of cases, it might add in glucophage and losing weight can add to the resumption of 
ovulation, about 30% of cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it means it means she still will have much lower fertility than average and will need to take the birth control pill, but it doesn't make Boring. her super... Fu well, she was yeah. saying, I'm going to Google oh, page. I'm going to get pregnant right away. It's nothing like that. Nothing like well, that. Wesley told me this whole thing during the break, except for, Wesley, you did say between 31 and 33%, not 30%. I don't want to mm -hmm. make you look stupid on the radio, but mm. Wesley kind of explains the, the whole glucophage thing to me and how it affects fertility <laughs> during the break. All right? There you go. So right. I'm, I'm up to speed. All right, well, good times there, Drew. Yeah, good times. Now, uh, slap that uh, laptop closed on your nutsack, would you? Uh, all right, here you go. <laughs> Please. <laughs> This computer, Ow. you know, everyone thinks it's a great breakthrough. Meanwhile, you got everyone looking everything up and boring everybody. All right, looking good, though, Drew. Looking real good. Good hey, time. Uh, yeah. Later uh, on Wednesday, Pink is coming in here, and then uh, Kathy Griffin's coming in here, and uh, Rob Schneider's coming in here, and Blink-182's coming in here, and Ron Livingston's coming in here, and uh, then a band called Thanksgiving Off. Oh, Ooh. no, wait a minute, Drew. That's our favorite band, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's Love Thanksgiving, there. baby doll. Yeah. All right, we got that to look forward to. All right, so uh, where were we? We'll take, we'll take a call. Let's do a Germany or Florida. Okay. And uh, and then we'll uh, play a song from uh, Puddle of Mud. Germany oh, here's the theme. Yeah. or Florida. Here's how the game goes, Wesley. Oh, good idea. Uh, we've decided that uh, the uh, universe of evil is split between Germany and Florida. All bizarre evil comes out. Now, not just killing your kids evil, but sort of bizarre, twisted evil. It either comes out of Germany or Florida. So people call in. They give us a bizarre story, and uh, we make a guess. Germany or Florida. John? Hey. What's up? What's up? Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to let you know uh, I created uh, Germany or Florida online. Mm -hmm. so you can play the wonderful game online. Thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> Thank is, you. It, is it more? Is it uh, Florida or Germany dot com? Uh, Germany or Florida dot com. Uh, I beg you. Thank mind. you for ripping off the idea that I ripped off from the Jimmy Kimmel show, which never put it on the air. But go ahead, <laughs> John. Yeah, what uh -oh. happened to John? He dropped the phone? I think you scared him. He's Jesus got bad Christ. service. Mm. All right. I was expecting a good Germany or Florida from John because, uh, after yeah, all, he website, had a website. Yeah. Germanyorflorida.com. Jesus Christ. All right. Now he's off the line. All right. Now I really want to play Germany or Florida. So somebody call in. But screeners, listen carefully because I don't want to do one we've done before. Uh, let's see. Parents constantly fight about divorce. Now, is it normal for girls to have wet dreams? Huh? That's Sarah from Chicago. Yeah, let's talk to Sarah. Sarah? Hey, what's up, you guys? You're 18. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You want to know if it's yeah. normal for girls to have wet dreams? Yeah. What about it, Drew? Yeah. It seems easier. All, no, they, yeah, they, they may not even be wet, necessarily. We're not yeah, the way no, they're not wet. Ones. It's just like I get off, you know? Yeah, that's a very normal thing. That's okay, a good thing. Well, I, That's a good thing. I had another question. Um, is it normal for like girls to get tighter over time, like when they're sexually active? Tighter? Yeah, like I get tighter instead uh, of like, depending on the man. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring a girl in a couple of notches. I'll ratchet that <laughs> vagina in. Yeah. My penis is like a it's like a key that opens a sardine can. You know, I just I get in there, I turn it a couple of cranks, it gets tighter, tight, ratchets it right down. Yeah, yeah. their eyes start opening wider, but yeah. the crotch gets smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Something's got to give. True. What about it? Can a constant pounding uh, make this make the uh, vagina contract? Uh, no, I don't see how. It just may no. make it feel that way a little bit, but no, it shouldn't. No, no. because it gets sore. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because well, most people say that it loosens up, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Sarah, right. you're fine. And and it would be easier for a woman to have a wet dream than a guy because they don't have moving parts. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, a guy to have a wet dream has got to have, you know, he's got to produce something. Yeah. A woman could actually just have a sexy dream and have an orgasm. Yeah. Exactly. I have them, they like, might grind, they might grind a little bit a on something. It would be nice. Huh? Three times I have, a like, week? Two or three times a week, yeah. Ooh. Do, you, do you masturbate? Yeah. Ooh. You do. You and masturbate two or three times a week. before you go to sleep, go to sleep, no. and you still <laughs> have it. Not no? before I go to sleep. I mean, I do like regularly. Right during the day. Uh, I don't know. I mean, me and my boyfriend have sex regularly, and uh, I get off then too. So. Yeah. All right, baby doll. Do you have multiple yeah. orgasms? No. 
No, okay. All right. Hmm. Good times. What are you doing? Good you, times of living. You working? Yeah. I worked at a pool hall. I'm a waitress. Nice. Do you ever go to sleep pool there? Hall. Huh? <laughs> you ever get Take you a on, nap in the back or something. Does he ever nail you on a snooker table? <laughs> no. I just got a pool table, though, so we'll see. You did? Oh, yeah. No, you go. got a christen it. Yeah, right exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, ball thank in you. The Play some pocket. stick. Yeah, good times, baby doll. All right. All right. Once in a while, you get a chick who's 18, sounds like she's eh, 33, 34. Like, that chick just sounds like she doesn't sound like an 18 year old. This no, is working pussy up. gets. Uh, oh, yeah, cool. you know, hey. yeah, as as the uh, as the trim gets tighter. Yeah. What? The. Uh... <laughs> Wesley freaked himself out over here. I think I freaked out. He dropped the p word. I, I think we can say that. Oh, okay. But I'm not, I don't think we should. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure the rules. We never seem to get in enough trouble for doing this show. Drew, they're quiet pussies. over there. Drew, what a bunch of pussies. No, it's true. Pussies. <laughs> All right. Oh, Evidently, nah, nah. we can say it. Let's hear a song from uh, Puddle of Mud. How about that? You psyched, Drew? Mm-hmm. What, you drink? <laughs> yeah, well, I was having no, a drink he, of coffee. He was Come having on. a sip of Postum. Yeah, Let me well. tell you something, Drew. Yeah. You and your low self-esteem over here. You know, yeah. we don't have milk for my coffee. You want to know why? Because of me. Because you like the powdered stuff. Why don't you put milk in your coffee like a man? How can you put powdered stuff? Drew prefers the powdered crap above the milk, and it's not like it tastes, you know, it's not like Irish cream or anything. It just says powdered stuff. It's yeah. whitener. It actually says whitener on the thing. It's, it's generic white. It's like putting flour. It's like sprinkling flour on top of your coffee. Yeah, he likes milk. it over milk. It's nice. Yeah, it's great for you, and now we don't have any milk. I blame you, Drew. Why can't you put milk in your coffee like a human being? All right, I'll start. Start for doing you. it, would you? Yeah, I'll start doing that. Do you yeah, actually I, think the powdered crap tastes better, or is your, lowest, your, your self-esteem that low? I, I can't explain it, really. It's not even about low self-esteem. It's about, I don't know, being on radio, and I don't know. I can't knock really. it off, would you? Because now yeah. I don't have any milk, right. and then I'm the complainer. And Drew, oh, yeah. he, gets, he gets by on, on talc. <laughs> what do you need milk for? Oh, your highness, you need milk. True, just uh, ate a, uh, someone uh, hawked a dried loogie into his coffee. He was happy as could be. Look at you, big prima donna. All right, Drew, let's hear something from Puddle of Mud, yes? Ah, uh, yes, please. All right, this song is called Away From Me. Puddle of mud for you. Wesley's here tonight representing, and uh, the new CD, Life on Display, is out uh, Tuesday, one week from tomorrow. John Stamos, the 26th Beach Boy, is on line seven, or so, <laughs> so it says. We'll find out. John? John? Hi, Adam. Goes by the name. John Stamos? Adam? What's happening, my brother? I just did uh, your boy uh, Jimmy's show. That's right. He's good people, isn't he? He's good and he's funny, but um, I wanted to talk to you because I haven't. Uh, I've, I've been dying to do your show. Really? And talk about sex and such. Because producer Ann has been uh, dying to get you in here for ever since you were Blackie on Days of Our Lives. Nobody <laughs> asked me. <laughs> Nobody's asked you. Well, see, these these are what publicists do, John. They get in between. Well, you got your boy Lewis, who never, you know. Oh, yeah. Is my publicist your publicist? Yes. You know, let me tell you how evil publicists are. They even keep their own clients away from each other. They're exactly. that evil. General Hospital. Is Dr. Drew there? <laughs> yes, Do John. Hi, Doctor. Talk to, talk to John. Hey, John, and what's Jim up? Jimmy just jumped on. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy. What's, what's happening? Going on here, right? We're having a party afterwards. How'd the show go tonight? The show went well. Went Midgets. Very well. We had a, a midget kiss band. Freaked me out. Nice. And John actually is terrified of midgets. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> and the greatest thing is he's got a, a midget thing, you know, and I guess whatever the reverse of a fetish is. <laughs> and kryptonite. At the end of the night, they were they were entering and they were sitting up on the bar, and uh, one of the guys said, hey, who's going to help me down? And he extended <laughs> his, I wouldn't say hand, I'm mean, more of a paw. Yeah. Yeah. He extended his paw, and John and I. <laughs> Jimmy was like, hey, help him down to make out with him. <laughs> and then we did that thing you do with kids where you take a one, two, three, swing. <laughs> we just kept doing it. Yeah. Were these, were these dwarfs or midgets? Um, dwarfs. Is there, okay. 
Here, here's the honest truth. I, I, I've had a, a, an issue with, with little people, my, like, the last 10 or 15 years. Everywhere I would go, like, to Disneyland or to, like, any, anywhere in public, little people would kind of show up, like, at, at dinner, like, a family of little people. And people <laughs> thought I was crazy, like, you know, you're, you're you know. <laughs> and then my friends would go out with me and say, oh, my God, you're right. But then I met Rebecca, and they kind of disappeared, so. She's very tall. They're afraid they'll get stomped. No, but that's one of the reasons why I married her. A lot of people think it's all, you know, she's cool. And, and, but, but that was, you know, I couldn't talk about it in my vows. But What garlic is to vampires, Rebecca, is to midgets. Kryptonite. Wow. Yeah. That is... Uh, but that, no, I'm kidding. The, the, these guys were great. The no, we don't are, like midgets. I'm, I'm with you. And asshole. why should someone as uh, physically perfect as you or Rebecca have to put up with anybody that's less than that? <laughs> it's not about looks. I totally agree with Stamos. The beautiful people do not need to talk to the warts on the ass of society. No, no, no. It's not about looks. It's about, it's about, it's about money. You chill with the Olsen twins and the Beach Boys. You leave the midgets and the ugly people to me and Kimmel. That's right. We know how to handle them. <laughs> you know what freaked me out? When I met you, and I was so excited to meet you because I'm such a fan, your wife was like, well, that you, that told me that you watch Full House all the time. Yes. That's Constantly. Weird. You're gay. I, I love Full House. I, it's good family entertainment. And I also was a big, uh, I was a big TGI Friday fan, too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, Adam like the Fred Savage's brother and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 and I loved, I loved Full House. I, I, I loved uh, you. You were, you were, you were, you were a, a tough biker with a heart of gold, though. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You really were. You loved those kids. Thanks, I'm sure. You, thanks, I'm sure you don't talk to any of the cast anymore. But I mean, on the show, you were fond of them, right? <laughs> when I need money, I talk to the twins. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, Who listen. else is on the show tonight? I, I hear another voice. Oh, uh, Wesley's here from Puddle Hey, what's up, Mud. John? How you doing, brother? Hi, Wesley. Let's talk to that. We can't. Okay, sex. Go, sex. We, we got to take a break. Can you guys hang on? I'm going to let no, John hang hell on. No, hell no. I can't hold on for sex. <laughs> We're interrupting Puddle of Mud, though. Oh, yeah, man. What's up? I'm sorry. Are you guys, guys. Are, you guys in, are you in Jimmy's dressing room? Yeah, it's great. It's, it's great. Sarah's Rebecca here, Rebecca. over there. Oh, Sarah's Lynn over there. Here with her shirt off. Uh, John right, let, there you go. Listen, John, I'm t I, <laughs> you guys, hey, Jimmy, I think there's going to be some swinging going on. Well, <laughs> I, I really do. Out of his pants. Favreau hey. just walked in. He's, he's, he's naked. All right, listen, John. Come yep. in and talk to us in person as soon as you can. I, I really would because I'm such a huge fan of the show. And uh, I want to talk sex. I want to keep Rebecca off the show because she's a little loose-lipped. Fine. Let's, we, don't need, we don't need any midget hating Ooh. troublemakers uh, <laughs> right. on this show. <laughs> uh, God bless you. All right, Adam. See you tomorrow. See you, Dr. Uh, John, Thanks I'll see you in... Uh, well, oh, yeah, you like that? We, what's that? His meat, meat cutting board. All right. We got to take a quick him. break. We'll be right, right back. My kisser. My kisser Aziz. Yeah, it's all like what? It's always girl? like kisser. It's That's always right. like my saying? zoom. My zoom. My there. zoom zoom Z. Yeah. Wesley's here from Puddle of Mud. That's what I'm What's up, everybody? About. Yeah. Everybody get up. Come on. Uh, somebody here's uh, calling, by the way, knows why uh, Drew likes uh, powdered milk over real milk. Uh oh. Why? We gotta check that. I, out. I don't know. They they evidently know. Should we talk to them? It's yeah. gonna be disappointing. It's gotta be scientific. He's calling from Pasadena, which is your hometown, by the way. Yeah. Maybe he knows something about you, George. Yes, sir. You're 26. Why does Drew, other than low self-esteem, why does he prefer powdered creamer as opposed to milk in his coffee? Well, actually, this is a scientific uh, explanation here. Uh, milk creates phlegm in the voice. Mm. Oh. Which, when you talk on a microphone, makes you sound kind of, you know, I don't know, you kind of get that whole blah, 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 blah. Kinda, you know. He's absolutely like, correct about that. Uh, oh, dairy, you know. all dairy You're saying that affects the vocal right. cords. You know, right? Yeah. You can't drink a milkshake before you go out on stage, no, right? No. No, not you can't. Even, you're not even supposed to drink milk on a hot day because, you know, you'll poo cheese. So. Mm hmm. Sometimes I like to poo cheese, though. Yeah, if it's it, good, it, it, and if you can, if you can, if you can aim it just right so it lands on the cracker. There you go. There you go. That's a great shape. All right. Uh, so, so George, George's hypothesis <clears throat> is that Drew is such a pro. That's why he doesn't put the dairy products in his uh, 
in his coffee. I would argue that if he was really that much a pro, he wouldn't sock the mic three or four times a night when he's moving around, whacking it every night in his elbow, talking to people uh, off the microphone, saying things like thanks when people walk in and hand him stuff. And then or how about taking the guest out of the, out of the hall and talking to him for five minutes <laughs> yeah. when the how show about, starts? How about the other night when the show started and Drew was out chatting the guest up in the hall? Oh. Someone had to go get him. That is not the mark of a professional, my friend. So these all would uh, poke uh, gaping holes in George's professional idea. But uh, but a worthwhile try. And, and, and Drew, a supporter of Drew, obviously. All right. Uh, Wes, who do you want to talk to? you want to talk to uh, someone about condoms, parents constantly fighting? Now, what about this guy's just been on hold for 79 minutes? Maybe we should talk to him. Give him Alex? one minute to go. That should be good. Yeah. Alex? Yeah. You're 17? Oh, Sorry. Alex may be asleep. asleep. Yeah. Oh, I, I hear think I hear him. Yeah. Let's go for number, uh, let's go for the ex fiance left. No, no, hold on. All we got here. All right. Alex. We got oh, there he is. There he is. Alex. is he I hear him. I, he's still uh-huh. here. Wake up! Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. What's Get happening, Get up, dude! Buddy? Um, yeah. Have a, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I'm clear gonna... your throat, man. You drink some. some f- you need some powdered milk. You need powdered milk, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having some problems with my family. Um, mm-hmm. My parents have been divorced. For, uh, my parents have been divorced for ten years. Right. We and, already um, answered the question. You were asleep. <laughs> and, um, okay. Were you sleeping, man? Almost. Okay, well, wake bro. up, brother. Well, all we right, gotta take so a break ask now. A question. Uh, all right. All right. So your parents. Wait. Your parents are divorced. Yeah. I know. Ten years. Yeah. Ten years. My mom remarried, and so did my also, my daddy also. And um. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to homeschooling because I don't kind of have credits oh. to graduate. Oh. So I graduate oh, and I was like 20. Yeah. And so they homeschool me so I can graduate in time with my sure. friends and I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's and, great. Um, my mom and my dad, before they got divorced, they had a credit card. Yeah. And they, did, they both had their names on it. And then yeah. 10 years later, my mom told my dad and there was like $20,000 spent on it. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second, Alex. Oh, boy. Hold on. It's going to take more than just a couple of seconds to sort out. I like that, by the way. At the, at the, at the rate you're going, you would graduate high school at 26. But we'll homeschool you. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a diploma in three weeks. You're going to make <laughs> it, great, bro. It? You're going to make it. I, I'd like to do some home college and then some home work and then some home marriage. How about that? You know, just go home, get everything you need? I think you should go back to sleep. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll get back with Alex after this. Love life, ass grown out loud radio North America. <laughs> Get down. Getting down. It's party time. Drew is over there at Syracuse Reference. <laughs> yeah. What's the lack over there, brother man? Three degrees. Three degrees. How the girls Trace. treat you over there, huh? Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot of fine ladies that part of the country. Careful, man. He'll drop trial. I'm telling you, he will do it. He'll do it. Watch out. He'll do it. Drop trial. Wes will drop trial. He's out of control. We'll drop it. We're dropping it. We'll drop it it together. Okay, we've dropped it. The the, the trial's officially dropped. Who said that, (laughs) Drew? Yeah. 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 All right. Now I got a headache. Back down to reality. Everybody, Wesley's uh, here from Puddle of Mud. The, uh, What's up, everybody? C- CD is coming out uh, one week from tomorrow, and uh, let me uh, let you kiddies in on a little something-something that uh, Puddle of Mud is doing. One lucky person will have the opportunity to go out on tour with Puddle of Mud on the tour bus, hang backstage, hang with the band. Is this for, uh, Receive this for one week? Receive free guitars, free just all kinds of stuff. Get cash, party. It's going to be fun. It's yeah. going to be insane. And here's how you do this. You buy the CD, and uh, if the CD has the uh, lucky prize in it, now what is it? It's a platinum ticket. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, when you open the CD, it's going to just grab it, and, man, you call in, and, you know, you get, to get your own tour bus. Right. Come hang out with us. Get, you know, we're going to give some free guitars away. We're going to sign a bunch of stuff. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be off the off now, the hook. Now, you guys will be on your tour. Yeah. And the they're going to roll with us. They're going to roll with us. But they'll join you wherever you are on your tour? Is that how it yeah. works? Yeah. They're going to just fly out, get their own bus, and uh, 
we're just trying to like give back to the you know give back to the fans, interact with the fans, right. and uh, have a good time, and avoid people uh, ripping the stuff off on the internet. Uh, yeah, definitely, Screw man. Them. I mean, you know, when I was growing up. Um, and I'm sure, you know, when you were growing up, mm. you couldn't just kind of walk into a store and go, hmm, I'll take that, 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 and that, and roll out, you know? Right. So, uh, and without consequences, you know? Yeah, listen, we had we had 8-track cassettes. <laughs> yeah, right. Reel to reel. Drew would actually have to have the band in his car if he wanted music in his car. Drew, of back course. in the day? Of course. You'd throw, you throw him in the rumble seat, right? Uh, but was, on, yeah. Yeah, put on your raccoon coat. We didn't have these newfangled devices like an electric guitar. Yeah, yeah, right. Guys, just play. Hey, I'm still going old school with the acoustic guitar. You know, that's no, how they, I they write played most like of my songs. So the recorders and things like that. When I'm in the day, they for didn't me. have microphones either. Drew's no. bands would sing into one of those megaphone <laughs> things. Don't you be I used my to... melancholy baby, <laughs> right? <laughs> Guy in a straw hat. <laughs> I used to record with a karaoke machine and switch the tapes back and forth. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was, would like it was, mix it that way? It was a complete bitch. You understand what we've been through, kids? Total bitch. All right. Let's, uh... Now, who were we talking to? Oh, we were talking to uh, Alex that, yeah. up here. Yeah. He's, He's fighting. Had, His parents are fighting. Had some trouble. Alex? Yeah. All right. Parents have been divorced for 10 years. Yep. Credit card with uh, both their names on it. $20,000 yeah. bill. Yeah. And, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I go to school with my dad, where my stepmom actually teaches me. Oh. And um, now I'm very pissed, and they want my mom to pay this money. And right. she just got recently divorced, so she's not financially mm. steady or whatever. She, All right. And, um, All right, anyway. let me let me uh, interject here, Alex. Uh, your, your, your parents are they're embarrassing disaster. That's fine. Yeah. You're going to homeschool. Forget about this homeschool. So what? You get a homeschool diploma. What do you do with that? I don't know. Or lay that into anything. You're not going to college. You need to start looking for a job, my friend. I got one. You do? Yeah. What are you doing? Cook. Cook. All right. All right. What, what kind of cook? I was cook? actually going to go to a culinary school. All right. Well, there you go. Listen, here's the advice. You should probably pick up the guitar and uh, release some inner demons, man. Yeah, <laughs> or spatula and release uh, some inner demons. <laughs> and, yeah, li- I, I, yeah, stop looking to the bong to release those demons. <laughs> uh oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. It's gotta be tough to smoke weed when your stepmom is homeschooling you. Oh. You should probably, uh, you should probably like, uh, you know, pick up some uh, guitar or something, man, and uh, you know, release some of that aggression you got inside of you, man, and uh, do probably you, come out, probably come out pretty cool. Do you play? Uh, you play music? You interested in music, Alex? Not really. <laughs> All right. Screw that, then. <laughs> Look, it's not for everybody. Not everyone can be an artist, Wes. All right, Alex, here's what you need to do. You need to focus on your job. Don't worry about the homeschooling. Get a friend. Get a roommate. Move, move out. out. Yeah. And yeah. leave all these troubles behind. Do not feel responsible for your parents and their woes and their screwed-up relationships and lives. Mm-hmm. You just get your stuff. Get your roommate. Get out into the world. Get on your own. And start finding your way. Yeah. And you may need to deal yeah. with that pot, seriously. <laughs> well, pay, pay attention Smoke, to that. Smoking a lot of weed, Alex? What? No, not really. They're not really. Occasional. Yeah. Occasionally. All right. All right. What kind of cooking do you do? Short order cook? Uh, Spanish food, uh, part-time. Oh, really? Because, yeah, he's calling from Minnesota. You want that good Mexican food, you go to Minnesota, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no better, no finer Mexican cuisine in the United States than Minnesota, am I right? Yeah. Further oh, north yeah. you go, the better it gets. <laughs> yeah. It's a head north for the border. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, buddy. Look, I, I, okay, let me give my speech. Um, not everyone's a good student. I was a horrible student. I'm guessing uh, Wes didn't make the dean's list. Uh, I don't even know if I even knew who the dean was. That's my point. But you were good at something, and you focused on it, and now you make a nice living doing it. And all you people like Alex who just, you know, you're not good students, fine. You're not going to college. Great. You can make a good living as a chef. You go to culinary school, go That'd there cool. for, go there for a couple of years. Next thing you know, you're 19 years old, and you get a decent job at some uh, four-star hotel. I guess what we're saying here is that Adam Carolla is the poster <laughs> child for not doing well in school and <laughs> finding something you are good at and becoming literally a millionaire. I'm literally a millionaire. I'm l- 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 literally, <laughs> literally a millionaire. Yes, Drew? <laughs> yes. The cash is falling from the ceiling right now. 
Literally. Literally, I'm a millionaire. Whatever. All right. Where are we here? Uh, let's see. Who's been on hold That's a good second song. longest? <laughs> let's talk to uh, Anthony. Been on hold for uh, 82 minutes. We're going to try to get 82 minutes. Hey, Anthony. Hey. Hey, you're 14? Yeah. What's up? Okay, um, my question is, uh, well, I've been having sex with my girlfriend, and uh, I'll, she's also 14, and I want to know, like, mm-hmm. if I could get in trouble, like, what are the statutory rape laws and stuff like what that? What state are you calling from? California. Yeah, yes, you can get in trouble. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes, you can. But yeah, plus, can... that's kind of young, man, isn't it? Mm, not young that's man. pretty young, man. Four, let, let's be clear. 14, 14 is, is young. It is very yeah, young. That's, and yeah. although for you, you may feel like you're ready, uh, it's young. And for her, you might want to move on to... Uh, like maybe uh, 16, 17, I don't know, man. It's if, still if you're 18, I mean, I guess If, if it's cool, California, Drew, yeah. what is the law now? If it's California and you're both 14, it's illegal because the girl's under 14? Under under 16. I mean, I'm sorry, under 16. Right. That's the, how it the, works? In other words, I think I think the law is that they can be within three years of the woman as long, right. as, as, long as she is, if he's over 18. If he's over 18? Is it yeah. 18? Okay, okay. All right, Drew, you're obviously confused Man, here. It's 18. Wait a minute, that's right. right. It's a fine line. It, here's, the, here's what I'm saying. If the chick is under 18 and you're under 18, it's better for you than you being over 18 and her being under 18. Right. But it still can be legal. R- correct. Uh, okay. All right, so uh, you've got to... You've got to deal with that there, uh, Anthony. What are you using for protection? What, a Pez dispenser? What do you uh, use at uh, 14? <laughs> She's on birth control. All right. At wow. 14? Wow. Where'd, 14. She get, where'd, she, where'd she get it? Uh, Planned Parenthood. Fantastic. Wow. All right. Good for you guys. Well, uh, there you all go. Right. But, Adam, I think, I, yes. I, think it, it's, I think you can be 17 as long as the guy is not over 20. And you can be right. 16 as long as the guy is not over 19. Okay. Right. The guy, the guy can be within three years of the girl if she's under 18. Right. So I think, I think that's right. But that doesn't work if the chick is 14 and you're no. 17, does no, no, it? No, 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 no. Well, then what's the cutoff, 16? Yeah, I think, I believe. Okay. Uh, again, we do this show every night. People call from all over all over the country. They want to know the rules on statutory rape. Couldn't we just unify these rules? Does it does it have to be well in Hawaii it's fourteen but in, in Nevada, Thailand it's, it's like it's Thai well I don't know if we, how much how much jurisdiction we have over other nations but at least in the United States couldn't we just call it eighteen or sixteen or whatever it is does it have to vary from Florida to Nevada to California it, it, it's it's very confusing it's a union and, of independent states. All right, but we agree on certain things. Like, we agree on the age to vote and the age to buy liquor, or at least we have recently come to gr- agree on ages uh, such as, uh, yeah, voting, the military, things yeah. like that. How about just the age of consent? Just call it 17 in a month or something well, and just Adam, move this forward? Is such an probably, like, controlling thing. the population or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just like the unified. That's all I'm, I'm saying. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, let's uh, talk. The unified thing, yeah. Talk to uh, Andrew, been on hold for 94 minutes. <laughs> Adam, Jesus. you got to get some calls here, dude. Hey, buddy. Come on. Come on now. Andrew? Yeah. You're 20? Yes. You're calling from Missouri? Yes, sir. That's right. What's right up there, Missouri. buddy? Missouri. Uh, well, okay. I've been with my ex, I was with my ex fiance for four years. Mm-hmm. She decides to up and leave me two and a half weeks before we get married. We have mm-hmm. a seven-month-old son together, and uh, she's been, like, messing around with this other dude, and he's mm-hmm. leaving for the military in January. Mm-hmm. And, like, lately she's been coming around a lot more than she has been in the past, like, month or so. Mm-hmm. And every time we're over here talking, she's like, this is kind of a bad situation. I'm like, why, you know? Mm-hmm. She says, because she'll end up doing something, and I'm just, like, wondering if... I should even, like, try anything with her or what? (laughs) Well, let me ask you this. You have a seven-month-old. She, did she leave your seven-month-old with you or did she take him with her? No, she took him with her. She took the boy uh, with her. Are you you fathering the child at all? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. You're in the child's life? Yes. So you guys have to have a relationship as parents anyway? Yeah. And what was the reason she gave you for leaving two weeks before your marriage? The day she left, 
she just came home and like got her stuff and the baby and left. But the day before, we got into an argument about oh, me writing up a will. I was like, mm-hmm. and at the time I was only 19. I was like, I'm 19 years old. My son's four four months old. Right. I'm not. I don't plan on dying anytime soon. You know. And what, by the way, what are you leaving behind? A, a bong <laughs> and a moped? <laughs> no, I mean, You're 19, for the love of Christ. Well, some some Healy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a leather fanny pack, <laughs> one Hirachi, a bong that was an apple at one point, and part of a toilet paper roll, <laughs> and uh, and a moped. Oh, and a zipper scooter. Well, now, see, I'm a little more established than most 20-year-olds. Really? I have... I have Three cars in my name. Actually, three, three cars. cars that are paid for. Really? My own house and own house. Oh. a couple, about two hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Holy crap! How do you, how, what do you do for a living, man? Yeah, I um, build steel roof trusses. Okay, and listen, uh, screw her. I'm moving out there. <laughs> we'll start it. We'll start fresh, brother. And I can, uh, I can, I can build a truss myself. You know what I mean? I know, I know the difference between a, a joist and a purlin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's totally different. <laughs> yeah, he's impressed, Adam. He's impressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. You're doing good, man. Yeah, I know the difference between a ridge rafter and a top plate. She's confused for sure. Yeah. No, not really. <laughs> okay, so what what happened? Someone kick off and leave you all this stuff? Um, a couple Grinch grandparents went and left me money. So. Yeah. It's all coming into focus mm. now. What Let's kind of wheels it. you got? What kind of car do you got? Um, well, my daily driver's a '97 Cavalier, mm-hmm. little little pooter car. Sweet but I got a uh, 2000 Eclipse GST. Ooh, nice. that's strictly set up for the <coughs> drag strip. Mm-hmm. Mm. And good then fun. I've got my Montero. <clears throat> all right, you're doing good. So, right, look, but, I don't trust this chick. Yeah, she's no. dragging you into some chaos no. here. Yeah, just, she's like, going, and, you know, she, that's right. he, she's coming back into his life. It's like... Right. I don't trust her. She's going to be a very chaotic uh, wife and mother. And then what will end up happening is you think, all right, well, we got a kid, and we were in love, and blah, blah, blah. Why do you have three kids? And she goes AWOL again four years from now. Right. Yeah, I mean, the reason I say anything is because the whole time we've been together, it's on it. we were together on and off. Yeah. And every time well, we broke up, it was because of her. And she never gave me a reason. Well, I bet she comes from some chaos. Oh, yes. Yeah, she does. Oh, yeah. Serious, serious, serious kid. Serious, serious kid. kid. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, like you know, abusive parents yeah. or alcohol oh, yes. parents or Both. whatever. All of that. You, if Both. You, okay, so listen, Andrew. Yeah. You may know uh, steel trusses, but I know the ladies, all right? Mm-hmm. Okay. You do the, do, do the truss work, do you not? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not impressed uh, about the uh, Perlins or the Ridge Rafter talk, though, huh? No, not okay. really. <laughs> okay, it's because for yeah, him... I know, what it all, I know what it all is. I do it all day long. All right, buddy. Yeah, right. therefore, everyone must know what it is. <laughs> See, Adam? <laughs> do what's best for your kid, man. Yeah, and for, screw her. Don't get back together with her. Yeah. All right? You all got right. An, you're an independently uh, wealthy man. You got uh, you got a couple hundred grand. Your grandparents left you. You got a nice house in Missouri, probably worth 18 grand. <laughs> you, got, you got a sweet Cavalier to tool around in. You got yourself uh, the, uh, you, what, you got a Mitsubishi that'll uh, run Eclipse. under a, you got an Eclipse that'll run under a 12-second quarter mile. Probably got <laughs> the nitrous, ta- what's it run? <laughs> nine. Runs in the nines? Yeah. What, do you got nitrous on that baby? I got 136 grand, 136 grand under just the hood. Yeah, see, that's a good father. 136 grand under what? the hood. What do yep. you got into that engine? Uh, it's import engine uh, yeah. and anything and everything you can possibly think of. You got the nitrous on there? Uh, 300 shots. You got the turbo? Uh, yeah. What kind of compression you're running? Uh, it's eight to one. Or eight point uh-huh. three to one. Yeah, got to keep it low for the turbo. Yeah. How many pounds of boost you run on the turbo? Uh, fifteen. Wow. All right, that's healthy. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I like guys who uh, I like guys who just pour every penny into their four thousand dollar Japanese car to shave another tenth of a second in a quarter mile. <laughs> this is all, and believe me, when you know he's got a hundred. What do you say at one hundred thirty-six grand in there? Yeah. No, no, that car's gone from four thousand to forty eight hundred dollars now. <laughs> With bone it's stock, fast. bone stock. I wonder it's, what kind of movies grand. you own, man. With 
with the with the What's your favorite movie, man? With the Fast and Furious engine in it, it's worth another 800 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you get one penny for every seven thousand dollars you spend on that engine back. <laughs> so true. Uh, all right, but he might look, blow it up too. If in a oh, race, oh, I'm sure he's blown them many. I uh, here's here's the deal. If you got a girl, and you don't know this when you're 20, well, you got a girl who comes from chaos. Her mom, maybe her dad was abusive, alcoholism, people beating on each other, chaos. Okay, you get hooked up with that chick, you might have a couple of smooth months. Don't worry. There will there will be chaos, and it'll be a storm that blows in a couple times a year. She'll leave. It'll come yeah. to a head. She'll split. She'll go off some other guy. She'll be back six months later. Everything yeah. will be smooth for a while. Then more chaos. It is a it is a never ending chaos circle of s. Yes, fest. Drew. Yes, chaos fest. All right. He's got to. Uh, and he's going to build them trusses. Not impressed of my uh, my trust knowledge though. Isn't that weird? <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. The car knowledge was good, man. I knew about the cars. I knew awesome. about the trusses. Eh, but it's and, but stuff that he amazing. knew. He knows it. Therefore, it's no big deal. I, I'll bet uh. you this. I bet he builds trusses for a living. I know more about trusses than he does. <laughs> that's my that's my commitment to you, Andrew, and the listeners. Let's uh, hear something from uh, Puddle of Mutt. That's what yeah. I think we should do. Yeah, we gotta yeah. play second song. You uh, how you doing there, Chris? You queued up? Feeling good? Get your hair cut? You're looking good. <laughs> okay. Cloby, or you went to you went to a place. Per, you went to pro. How did you? No, uh, yeah. See, if I had hair like yours, I'd do the Floby. You got straight. You got you got good got good Floby hair. Let's hear a song. <clears throat> What's that song? Yeah. Puddle you want to do it when we come back? We can't play it right now before we go to break. We're pretty late already. All right. Uh, We're gonna take a. I'll let the baby have his bottle over there. Anderson got a rain on our parade. How dare you? Right. <laughs> he had to interrupt my very important uh, Floby jag I was having with Engineer Chris. All right. We're gonna take a uh, his favorite drop. We're gonna take a uh, quick break. We'll uh, come back. We'll hear a little something off the new puddle of mud CD. All after this. Hey, everybody. Bloodline, madam. That's Dr. Drew in Syracuse tonight. Yahoo. Yeah, that's deep, too, buddy. Yeah. He'll be uh, back tomorrow night. Then, We're uh, at our, I'm at our affiliate right here in mm-hmm. K-Rock. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's great. Good people Great studios, there. absolutely. Really? Nice. Okay, quiet down now. Pink is going to be in here uh, tomorrow night. No, Wednesday night. Then uh, Thursday, Kathy Griffin and... Uh, Lots of good people. Rob Schneider, Blink-182, and uh, Ron Livingston from, uh, let's see, you would know him Office from Space. Office Space. Uh, what else? Uh, Anderson Swinger. Sex in the City, not that I've ever Sex seen Sex in the City, yes, I've seen him on that. Swingers. What does he play? He's that dude. He's Mr. one of the Big? guys. <laughs> no, he's got like 5 o'clock shadow. He's new. Uh, okay. you'll, uh, you'll recognize him. Great uh, in Office when Space. When you see him. Yeah. And uh, then... Uh, Oh, all sorts of big names uh, rolling through here in the next few weeks. Hey, Adam. Uh, yeah. You got to hear what Drew was doing, doing during the break. It's good stuff. Yeah. Let's listen to it. You, did you record it? Come on. That's, that's right. That's right. Drew, come on. It's good. I got the good stuff. What's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. Anderson. Forget there's, there's a piano in there. Oh, you can't hear it. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Playing the piano during the break. There you go. Oh, come on. <laughs> Drew, what is that? Pi- are, are, are you in a shakies, Drew? Where are you? <laughs> What's going on? They got a piano in the studio? Yes. There's a guy, wow. there's a guy does AM morning shows here locally in Syracuse, and he plays the piano while he's doing his morning show. Isn't that funny? I could, I could dig that. That's awesome, I think. You know what I thought would, was one of the coolest jobs ever when I was growing up? Remember when you'd go to the mall and there was a guy who played the organ out front of the mall? <laughs> he just sat there in front of the organ store playing, you know, yes. high yellow ribbon on the organ. And I'd just walk right. by that guy and go, wow, this guy's set for life, right? I mean, he's got it made. He's the king of the mall. First off, everyone bows to him. The guys at Hot Dog on a Stick, the Orange Julius guys, they all kiss his ass. And he's just out there, and it's sort of for everyone to hear. It's not just the people that are in front of the uh, piano store. I mean, it echoes. The entire mall echoes with the sounds that come from that guy's 88s. That, true. I can yeah. see you getting into that. That'd be me. 
That uh, piano yeah. sounded really out of tune, man. Yes, it is. <laughs> is yes, it, it a, is. Uh, what, what do you got in there, an upright? It's a little old it. upright. It doesn't have a name on it. True. Like, Get I can over see there the... and play something. It's called no, the come on. It, that's No. Yeah. What do you got? Can you do chopsticks? Yeah. What can you do, Drew? Yeah, do something. Uh, uh, do a little Scott Joplin for us or something. <laughs> Et cetera, et cetera. Dude, no, Drew, Working it, man. Drew, for 10 years, never seen him uh, touch a piano. Drew, what else do you do, buddy? You speak French? <laughs> Don't tell me you speak French. No, I, no, me no. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, sing in French while you play no, the piano. No, no, no. Okay. Me too. All right. I'll tell you what let's, we'll let's do. Go, let's, let's hear a puddle of mud song. But you got talent. You know what I mean? Yeah, thanks, buddy. All right. That's what you always told me. Yeah, we got. Real I think the words you used. I think the, yeah. instead of talent, I think the words you used were boring, wooden. No. Uh, what were the other words? Not when you're playing that Scott Joplin on the piano. I see. I see. Okay, Drew, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hear something from Puddle of Mud, and then uh, later when we come back, you're gonna do the theme from the movie The Sting. Of course. Yeah. No. Huh? No. no. Okay. This is. Uh, a new song off the uh, new CD, which is coming out in, uh, well, one week from tomorrow, the uh, 25th. It's called uh, Life on Display, and the song is called Heel Overhead. Yeah, Puddle of Mud. Good song. Life on Display is the name of the CD. It is uh, out starting one week from tomorrow, and uh, you may just get that uh, platinum ticket, which uh, allows you to go out on tour with the band and uh, you only know if you buy the CD and open it up. I think there's actually platinum 10 platinum ticket. tickets. What's Did you like that, Drew? I got a platinum ticket. Uh, Drew, quiet down now. Right? <laughs> Where is your... What do you see? Is that Willy Wonka song? Yes, right. Alright, get on the piano and make with no, the uh, no, tickling no, no. of the keys, would you? Enough, enough. Alright. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> stop it's really just, it. Stop it sounds it. like a pigeon landed on it. It's a pianist. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a good song. And you know what you know what's nice is uh, Wes is here from uh, Puddle of Mud and uh, was up. He's was enjoying the song because he's not heard it on the radio before. It's probably the first time you've heard it on the radio, yeah. and it's nice because a lot of times bands come in here and we end up playing their song that that's two years old. They've heard it a thousand times, and quite yeah. frankly, they're tired of it. So it's nice nice to see the enthusiasm. No man, it was really. It was. I, I. I thought that was great. That was awesome, man. Well, it was a good song, and uh, so far everything on the CD is great. So uh, it's coming out again one week from uh, tomorrow. All right, let's uh, go back, Drew. Guess what I did while the song was playing? Besides bang my head, you went pee. <laughs> no, I looked to see what calls I wanted to take next. Ooh, wow! Yeah, that's right. Wow, you're a pro. All business. I'm going to start with Terry over here, who's 19. Terry. Hi. Hi. You're hey, Terry. What's up? Just um, married. Yeah. Calling and from Alaska. Yes. Nice. Damn, she's cold. And, uh, <laughs> Very much you, so. You got a question about uh, waiting to have sex? No, I waited until I was married to have sex. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know what an orgasm feels like or what I'm supposed to do or anything. I'm completely in the dark. How old are you now? 19. And you have a boyfriend? A husband. Oh, she's married. Husband, I'm sorry. Just got and married. And you don't know, he's not telling you what he likes, oh, no. or what, what's the problem? No, no, me. I know, but what do you he, mean you're not, you he's don't know fine. what? He's fine. He's fine. I just don't know how I'm supposed to have an orgasm ah. or anything like that. I've never been. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, you need to just basically wait about 15 minutes and then fake it. <laughs> That's what my ladies do. You're going to have to probably start masturbating and trying to figure it out for yourself, and then telling him what it is you want, what you need. Okay. What do you it's, guys it's not going to happen during. It's not going to happen during intercourse. You can forget about that for now. Does he give you oral, oral sex? Has he tried it? Yeah, but uh -uh. he must not be very good. Not so good at the oral sex. <laughs> he's probably listening. Um. Oh. Look, <laughs> he's he's, he's going to have to improve his oral sex technique, and you're going to have to help him if you want an orgasm. I don't know how you couldn't be good at that, though. It, uh, oh, yeah, you It's can. not that hard. You, 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 know? You, you, know, you know the problem Pretty is? simple. Let me Pretty tell you the problem thing. with the young guys. And this guy's a young guy? Yes, oh, okay, he's 19, yeah. 20. They, pu they push a little too hard. 
They yeah. try too hard. The thing about oral sex is a smooth, yeah, consistent right. pace. Yeah. You, here's what you got to yep. be. Here's yep. here's what you got to be like with oral sex. <clears throat> you got to be like if you if you take a guy and you take him a mile off the coast, you drop him out in the middle of the ocean. If he starts flailing and flapping and kicking and making a fuss, he never going gonna down. make it to shore. Yeah. He's gonna yeah. drown. Best way: smooth, even stroke. Barely make a ripple as you're Slow going through the water. Down. Nice and smooth, consistent, rhythmic. That's guys. Guys, guys get they shove their face down there and they go sick. Yeah, they have a spaz. Yeah, they like yeah. freak out. They're like, oh man. Yeah, they go nuts, and then the chick starts responding like she's not too comfortable. So they go double time. Yeah, and now now you're in trouble. Right. Nice and smooth. Yes. Because the ladies got to kind of they kind of got to flow into the whole system. I think it's time <laughs> to give my cat analogy. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Ah, let's see. Man would like his penis treated uh, like a uh, <laughs> like a nine year old treats a Labrador. You know what I mean? Just dive on and work it, man. Yeah. Just come here, by grabbing the ears, rustling it down, pulling the paws out. You know, flopping it down, the, shoving the face in the rustle belly. It, rustle, rustle it. that penis down. Now, you try, but a woman, woman, she needs to be treated like a cat. You can't just go bounding across the living room and pounce on the cat goes right under the right under the sofa or on top of the refrigerator. Cat, you put that hand out. Cat will come by, sniff around. Cat will rub on it a little bit, put a little pressure on it. <laughs> cat will create its own pressure, just like the vagina will. Put a little pressure on the vagina. If it feels good, it'll push back a little bit. If you feel it pushing back, that's a good sign. If you feel it pulling away... That's a bad sign, but smooth, even strokes. If you want that cat to stay on your lap, you don't start grabbing on it and twisting its ears and going at it from every direction. Smooth, consistent, even strokes. Start doing a little loving. Start doing a little loving. That's there. right. That's right. And the cat, loving. the cat, when it starts finding something it really likes, it start pushing, start leaning, start rising a little we'll bit. Show, show you that part. That's right. That's right. And right then, on. right on. Then you it's got it down. then it's TV time. <laughs> it's football time. Yeah, you get to the TiVo. That's the final destination, fellas. All right, so the, she need and and as a, as a woman, as a cat, don't be scared to tell that nine year old that's treating you like the Labrador. Hey, slow it down a little, Sparky. Yeah, just nice and smooth, nice and even. All right, we have a uh, Germany or Florida here, uh, Drew. Yay! Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, this is oh, good. Oh, big theme song. Hold on. Florida. Now, be prepared to be underwhelmed because it's a 14-year-old Zach. Zach? Oh, uh, hey. All right. All right. Uh, a six-year-old boy has been torn to death by two fighting dogs in school. Mm-hmm. Two other children are reported to have been hurt by the rampaging dogs, a pit bull mm-hmm. and a staff terrier. The boy, who was, on, who was a tur- in Turkish origin, died of his injuries soon after the dogs attacked him. Mm-hmm. The schoolyard playground where the children were taking part in games lessons. Mm-hmm. He rushed to the scene, shot the dogs, and killed them. We would have heard him. We would have heard yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Florida, Perfect. they wouldn't shoot the dogs. No, what? they they give the dogs the key to the city in Florida. Right, right. If if you kill uh, someone under 10, you are, you're, you're considered royalty in Florida as a dog. <laughs> all right. Number, uh, yes. And they, they uh, and also, they like their dogs over there in Germany. Yeah. And uh, the Turkish descent, that could be a German thing. We could also just be a push because, uh, no, Lord knows, you know, Florida's just a mixed bag of crayons. You never know yeah. what you're going to get over there ethnically. I, uh, we say in Germany here? I'd say Germany. Yeah. What says Germany? We all go Germany. Germany, Zach. Right. German Shepherd. Are yeah. we right? Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. We're uh, really uh, 17 out of 18 in the uh, Germany or Florida. Yes, Drew? Yes. All right. We're, we're fantastic at this. Let's uh, hop to the phones. And uh, to be fair to uh, to us, they usually slip up and work in Deutschmark or Goose Step or something, and it uh, keys us. Jared, you're 14? Yeah. Oh, really? Did I want to talk to you? Why do guys take longer? Wait, why does it take longer for girls to orgasm than guys? Yeah. Because. Yeah. Because that's the way God made it. Right. Because they're cats. Yeah, why do women lo- live longer than guys? They do. Uh oh. Most of them do. Jared, you got Yeah, not every one of them. Once in a while, one one buys it on a motorcycle or something. But by and large, uh, they live like seven, eight years longer than guys. 
Wait, why do it? Yeah, you got that to look forward to, Jared. Well, here's the trade-off. You get to have four or five orgasms for every one the chick has. On the other hand, you're in the ground ten years earlier. You know what I mean? It's a it's 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 a Got fair it. trade. <laughs> I, I take my life. I take my multi orgasmic my life where I leave a trail of semen right to the grave. A little bit of your chi leaks out with every orgasm, and that shortens your life. See? Maybe that's it. That's it right there. Just uh, a couple cc's of your soul is spilt into the hamper <laughs> each day. That may be true, Drew. Yeah, that's I, I, it. Of course, of course. I'm backing of course. off. I'm yeah. now backed off. I'm now three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good times, Drew. You uh, hop on that piano and uh, <laughs> make like. I haven't uh, touched a piano in like five years. I ain't gonna pay that for bad. radio. Well, why don't you work work up a little something for us? Yeah, we'll oh, yeah, we'll yeah, hear yeah, it. All right. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, please. Good time. Please good entertain time. us. Yeah, good time. Do a little puddle of mud when we come back. All right. <laughs> all right. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Buddy, love line. I'm Adam. That's uh, Wes from Puddle of Mud, and then uh, Dr. Drew's out in uh, Syracuse tonight. Drew, yeah. You work up a number for us on the piano? No, 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 no. Okay, no, no really. really. That's cool. All right, uh, let's talk to uh, Holly, who uh, comes from chaos and disagrees with my uh, synopsis about uh, chaotic women. Hello. Who come from chaos. Hey. Yes. What's up, Holly? I have a bone to pick with you, Adam. Go right ahead. Okay. A while, I think it was like two calls ago, you said that if a girl comes from chaos, I think you should run from them. Yeah. Is that what you said? Something like that? that? Probably, Well, yes. for the uh, 14-year-old calling. For the... Well, no, the guy, was, the guy 20. was 20. He was, was 20, 20, but... Okay. But maybe for a little bit older age bracket, because I'm 25, and I come from a lot of chaos, and I work very hard to maintain... A healthy adulthood, and Excellent. if I were to ever have kids, that I wouldn't pass it on. And to any other little girl right there that's maybe listening, that is going through chaos, you can get out of it. Like even mentally, it just takes a lot more work than other. All right, well, look, here's right. here's the whole thing about uh, the uh, chaos survivors, which is really just sort of trauma survivors. Yeah, it, it, it's it's like the person who gains weight easily and has a slow metabolism if you got somebody says hey screw it i'm just going to eat uh eat carney's dogs all day long then you're going to you're going to be married to a morbidly obese person who dies of diabetes when they're 39 but if you got somebody who realizes there's a problem here exercises eats right and works hard at it then you have a better person maybe than you would have had right so Holly, yeah, you can be, if you have someone that comes from chaos and they go, okay, I'm going to get some therapy, I'm going to get some counseling, I'm going to really work on my problems, I'm going to be very conscious conscious not to do this kind of stuff in front of my kids and to my partner and all that, then you probably have a person that may even be better than somebody who never had any chaos and didn't work on anything, although... If there was real, you know, yeah, it depends uh, how bad. Yeah. Serious abuse. It's it is tough. Yeah. I, yeah, I understand that, and I'm glad that we come to a common understanding now. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, screwball. If you listen, the bone has been picked. If you listen to this show with any I regularity, do. you'll I hear do. that all the time. I do, but that just kind of slipped a little bit. I don't listen to it regularly, but all right. Well, that's your problem, sister. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Listen more. But yeah. you know, I'm just. I just wanted to hear it from you. Thank you. All right. Well. All right. Thanks for calling. And you. And you know what? I'm probably one of the very few girls that thinks that you're actually hotter than Dr. Durham. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, was, was, there, was there a compliment in there somewhere? <laughs> That's good. I like that. Okay. So, Adam, Adam tell her about the, the girl that uh, told her friends that she was crazy for picking you. Remember that? Yeah, this all, yeah. Uh, this all started when I was uh, 14 and uh, Esther Chilidenko called up and said, uh, you know, it's between you and your friend Chris to see who's going to get to be my boyfriend. And Adam, I picked you. All my friends think I'm crazy, but I picked you. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's nice. That's people don't realize, you know, I went into the uh, masonry supply store today, and the guy behind the counter is like, hey, man, I was listening to you, making fun of them short valet parkers the other night, and I was <laughs> laughing my ass off. And I don't normally laugh that much. I mean, I listen to the show, and I don't normally laugh that often when I'm listening to the show. But the other night with them valet parkers, man, that was some hysterical 
little stuff, man. Because I've heard the show, and, you know, it's not, it's not very that funny. funny. <laughs> yeah, but the other night, man, <laughs> and it's like, you realize, like, uh, I eventually I said to the guy, hey, enough with the compliments. You're, you're killing my self-esteem. <laughs> I think it boils down to, like, beauty is skin deep. That's you know? right. That's right. I'm beautiful on the... Wait a minute. Wait, whoa. That sounded like more of the same, didn't it, Drew? Yes. Yeah. That's more more abuse coming from the beautiful West over here. It's easy <laughs> for you blonde Adonises to sit there and talk about inner beauty when you have no problems on the outside. But where do you get that nappy hair and those big teeth? <laughs> All right. Hold on, man. No, Wes, okay. you're into me, right? Yeah, you're, yeah. you're badass, There's nothing man. wrong with me. All right, Drew. Yeah, you're let's badass. Get, uh, let's get one more. <laughs> Why don't you ever call me badass? I, I, I'm, I, I love that. From now on, I'm going to. All right. And uh, Nayab. Yeah, hi Adam. Hi hey. Drew. Hi Puddle of Mud. Hey, what's yeah. up, brother? You're calling from uh, the United a, Kingdom. Right on. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. Simon, uh, we work shifts, and we like to listen to you because we think you're the funniest. How do you listen to us in the uh, UK? Internet radio. Oh, really? Wow, that's interesting. We, we love it. Well, I've tried you, to bring I've tried to yeah. bring Loveline over to the UK. I was over there last summer. I was trying to get something going over there. It's it hard. would be bigger than Jerry Springer because it's more intelligent. God bless you. See, I, everyone Adam, your politics so would smart. work here. It, it would, huh? Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. Well, thank you. Uh, and what the hell kind of name is Nayab? Uh, my parents are from Pakistan. Holy uh. Christ. Tell you, that English accent will screw you up. I was born here. Guy, an Indian guy, they all got that <laughs> English accent. No, not all right. You, you well, would you like me to, to talk like this? Yes, that would be much <laughs> more entertaining. Maybe more talented. <laughs> oh, my God. No, so not where, all right. Where do you work over there, Nayab? Uh, I can't say because I'm using the boss's phone. I understand. Uh. And, and what time is it over there? Uh, it is noon. Up to uh, 10 to 8. 10, 10 to 8. eight. All right, yeah. shut up, Drew. What do you know from now? It's 5 in the afternoon. It's uh, 10, <laughs> 10 to 8 in the morning, yes? Uh, yes, sir. All right, so you can work at your job in the uh, United Kingdom. And uh, hold on, kiddies. That's England. Oh. You understand? A lot of you, our... You know why I screwed that up? I'm three hours later here in the East Coast. It's 420 where Drew is. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know, England, that tiny little cat fart of an island just off the coast of Europe. Yes, most are yeah. callers are The U.S. is the biggest aircraft carrier. They uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, by the way, Drew, it would still be eleven o'clock over there if that uh, what you say is true. But no, it's, it's five hours later. It's eight hours from where you are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, quiet down. All right, so uh, Nayab. Yeah, you have, I have a, a question. Uh, yes. All right. Is there a reference hobo power? Mm. Okay, yeah, you know your scale is one to fifty. Yeah. No, it's a hundred. Yeah, right. Hundred, hundred is, uh, is it one to a hundred. No, a hundred is like absolute zero. It's a theoretic. It doesn't really exist in nature, but it, it could. The, I, the, I uni you, the universe would come to an end if we actually reach a hundred hobo power. Yeah, and let me explain hobo power very quickly. It is a unit to measure stink. We don't have one. We we have kilowatts and uh, BTUs. Ooh, British thermal units. We can <laughs> measure almost anything except for stink. <laughs> so I'm come, I've come up with hobo power, and here's how it is. So so you know, so when you go like, I was on an elevator with this cat that was at like nine hobo power. Everyone can go, wow, that's that's pretty serious. Instead of this guy reeked, you see what I'm saying? So yeah. Drew, what is vomiting? Is fifty? Fifty, yeah, fifty. You, you vomit. Get, you get to fifty hobo power, you vomit, and a uh, hundred again is just theoretical doesn't uh, necessarily exist. No one has ever seen 100, or, or at least <laughs> lived to tell about it. All right, we got to take a break. Nayab, God bless you for calling from uh, all the way over there in the uh, That's amazing. UK. Yeah, yeah, give us a call uh, anytime, and uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, that's the show, everybody. Drew. Yeah. You hey, go, Drew. You go back to that hotel, you get some rest, but uh, give me a call in my cell, buddy. Okay, of course. Yeah, we'll get our talk on. Yeah. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Wesley. Wesley, good to talk to you. Thanks you guys. Thank you so much. Puddle of Mud, everybody. New CD coming Life out. Life on uh, Display, 25th. One week from tomorrow. Go out and get it. Get that, uh, get that platinum ticket and go on tour with the band. God bless you. Pink in here Wednesday. Kathy Griffin Thursday. And until next time, it's Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo.